Recording in progress. And worship him. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget.
I live to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. To worship you, I live to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. Oh, Lord. 
lifts up on high the name of Jesus. Let's magnify, magnify, glorify Christ Jesus, or King, my King, oh, majesty. Can somebody worship, worship His majesty? Jesus, who died, is now glorified, King of all Someone has taken the place of the Lamb, and He is the Great I Am. Bless your name, Lord. For if you who died, now glorified, King of all kings. So take all the glory, Lord for it belongs to you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Because, Lord, in my weakness, you are strong. Even when I, I don't feel 100%. Lord, you are strong. 
And I just thank you, Lord, that I am here availing myself to be used by you. And we know, Lord, that your word is already blessed. I pray, God, that what you have given to me, Lord, would go forth with power, conviction, and clarity. I pray, God, that you will speak to not the flesh, because we must die to flesh. But you'll speak to your people's spirit in Jesus Christ's name. So be thou glorified, God. And I'm not going to ask you to come and do what you can do. I'm being specific. Come and heal. Come and rebuke. Come and discipline. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You guys hearing me? Because I can hardly hear myself. I was trying to, to sing aloud. And it was a struggle for me. But I want to thank God that I'm feeling much better. I sound awful, right? I don't sound awful. Well, I, so, I sound awful to me. Yes, so, um, well, today's the best I'm feeling. I had to skip three days of work during this week because I fell ill. And on, it was Wednesday. It was Wednesday I got up, went into the bathroom to bed. And I blew up my nose. And then I saw blood coming out. And I said, okay, what is this? So I went to the doctor. I didn't go to work that day. I went to the doctor. And the doctor said, that my I don't have any sinus. The sinus that is troubling me is affected. Yeah, and he's prescribed some, some medication for me. But on that day, then leading up to today, I didn't know that I could minister today because of how I felt. And I'm even struggling to, to talk for a couple of seconds after break. I feel like I'm running out of breath. <laughs> but I'm just asking you guys to pray for me while I minister. And I promise you, I, I won't be long. I won't be long. In Jesus' name, amen. So the scripture that was read, uh, Luke 7, from verses 36 through to 39. Uh, and I'm just going to read it again. It says, and you can be seated for this one. One of the Pharisees, sorry, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the, Pharisees, when, the, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. And I want you to picture this. Picture you eating with your family, having a wonderful time in fellowship. Then suddenly, someone appeared. A person who wasn't invited nor welcome. Doing something that was taboo. Something that would...
Because her mind would tell her that I'm not welcome there. You get what I say? These people will put me out. These people will scorn me. Because this thing that I'm about to do makes, makes no sense. Somebody say no more me. <laughs> say it again, Sister Opal, for your sake. No more me. Hallelujah. Online, I pray that you're hearing me. If the Lord said to you, get up and go in the middle of downtown and show three hallelujah at a particular time, would you do it? <laughs> My Lord. When cool sweat start wash, don't it? Diarrhea. Like one of make tyler to the seat on a sit on pan. Don't it? But saints of God, for us to portray the no more me lifestyle, we all have to die to flesh. And pride is one of the biggest stumbling blocks for us on this journey. Our flesh will tell us a lot of things. Who, me? For people are far from me? Eh? I'm going to look like an idiot. Don't it? Imagine I show you, hallelujah. One good, no, one all right. You can walk, say the one and walk off and go about my business. Second one, people stop. I start call people and say, look on that one, they know. <laughs> By the third one, no, everybody's around you. But I say to you, saints, when you're serving God, the I am that I am, the one who, the one who chooses to say, this is what I want you to do now. You get what I say? Sometimes we are going to look like an idiot. Even if the thing looks taboo, we are going to look like an idiot sometimes. But what? We have to die to flesh. <laughs> it's so funny how I use a sinner's experience. When I read this, I got so much things from it from the sinner's experience with Jesus. I may have been across a no more me message to saints from a sinner experience. The woman and I watch no face. She didn't care about what people would say. She, she wasn't focused on the people, but more was focused on attending to Jesus. So will you just block out the noise of the enemy and step out of the crowd and do that outrageous thing for the Lord? Focusing on him and him alone. The truth is, if you're not focused on the Lord, it will be impossible to live the no more me lifestyle if you're not focused on him. Tunnel vision, we have to remain Focus. Can't look left nor right. All the time the lady was there, she was just on Jesus, focusing on him, worshipping Jesus and him alone, even though people was present in the room. It's not like, it's not like Sister Opal, you're the home, you know, your closet, a prayer. No one's not and everything. You're all right with that car, nobody now watch you, don't it? You're good. But this woman have persons in the environment. And she didn't watch no fear. She didn't care. She was just attending to Jesus. My God. She didn't let the presence of others distract her. Nor hindered her encountered with him. Me so die hearted. Me I just well, I well want to encounter him, no matter where she say or he say. What they will say will not distract me or hinder my aim and goal to encounter him. Somebody say, "Block out the distraction." Yeah, yeah man. So, so when you wake up to have your morning devotion, to build an intimate relationship with the Lord. What you need for do? Oh, she, turn off your phone. Yeah. 
You turn off the TV. Right, mummy? Because I know mummy online. Yeah, man, you turn off Love FM. From the tablet? Yeah, when I spend time with God. Block out the distraction. Amen? We're talking about no mommy, right? Yes, block out everything. Block out everything that will want to feed the flesh. Because now, if the flesh is fed, this means that this no mommy lifestyle will be threatened. Look on behavior. You get what I say? And that is why the scripture says in Colossians 3, verse 5, part A. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. I know, I know, my, I know me write it. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Colossians 3, verse 5, part A. And I didn't even include the things that Paul was saying that we must put to death. The sexual immorality, etc., etc., etc. I'm just giving you the first part. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. And we understand from scripture that the flesh only reaps corruption. And the flesh desires different things from the spirit. So for us to always die to the flesh, we have to put to death. Or in other words, do not feed the flesh. Nor add, add any fuel to any desires of the flesh. You know, for example, if you find yourself gossiping, Anytime you see the gossiping clique, you just give them a high and buy. Don't it? Yeah, now, something for do. Because the more you limit your time with them, is the more they drift from you. And then now, the gossiping spirit flee. So if the social media is adding to the flesh, you realize so you're on Instagram, and you see this sexy man, and you see this sexy girl, and then you start loss. And then the loss start to something else. If you realize that that is happening, deactivate it. Deactivate it. You know what I say? If the conversation that your co-workers have will cause you to sin, whenever they start talking on that topic, you stick your finger in your ear, man. I just flee. Because this now will, will entertain some form of spirit and some form of desire where you really want to get rid of. You get what I say? So come from among them, man. The Bible says, put to death the sinful things. And when you kill something, it, this means it has no life to prosper. If you kill a chicken, it can't move. And you control the chicken when it's dead now, you know. You can do whatever you want to do with it. When you put something, when you kill something, it has no life to prosper. So it have, it, there's no room to even entertain it when it is dead. Amen? When you kill a tree, you have to uproot everything, which means you take it out from the root, don't it? Because if you cut it off, it's a possibility that it can grow back once it has the root. But what more you do? You dig, dig up the soil and take out everything and throw some gas oil on it. Amen? Yeah. So any sinful acts or deeds that has been lurking within us, we have to uproot it. We cannot add life to it. We cannot entertain it. Because if we do, they will not go away. And it's an ongoing process. Ongoing process. Amen? You know the term, you're dead to me? Yeah, you're dead to me. I can just imagine. We know said this wasn't happening, but... I can just imagine if that was what the woman was saying in her mind while she was worshipping Jesus. To the people who were there with Jesus. Yeah, man. 
I see you in the boat in the dead to me right now. When the dead about when you really dead to me, now appear in no mind. That is what we should say to any sinful deeds lurking. Right now, Uno, dead to me. You will not distract or turn me away from intimacy with God. Uno, dead to me. And in verse 37, when I was reading it, something jumped out at me. Verse 37 says, When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. All that happened, all that happened was that this woman heard, then moved. She heard and moved. No second guess. No second thoughts. No questioning. She just moved. She heard that Jesus was there. Then she just took up her stuff and just showed up. She just heard and moved. Somebody said, just move. Once you hear, just move. Just like the testimony I showed earlier. It came to me. Worship. And if I entertain any form of you know, thoughts, maybe I wouldn't have done what came to me. But once I heard it, I just moved quickly, you know, to execute. And to keep our guards, in, guards up in moving, we have to be able to resist the devil. Amen? Most of the times, it's the devil who is discouraging us, saying things like, this makes no sense. You will be ashamed if you do a thing as this. You will be laughed at. But as the scripture say, so humble yourselves before God. Is this the devil, don't it? <laughs> and he shall flee. James 4 verse 7. The enemy wants us to second guess God. Can you imagine? Here, worship. Mercy. Worship. Oh, man. No, I, 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 don't, I don't got that. You get me? I say, that's not God. So I'm just going to leave it alone. The enemy, wa the, the, that's the enemy's strategy. You know, he wants, a second, wants us to second guess God. He wants us to be double-minded. But I say to you, saints, once it is from God, just move. Once you're here, just move. There is peace when you move, but regret when you don't. Because when God gives you an instruction and you disobey, especially if he allows someone else to do it, oh my, what shame and regret you will feel. Imagine God give you an instruction. Just go tell Sister Opal, say, I love her. And then, you see Sister Trish go over there. And whisper something in her ears. You don't know that, you know, but you disobeyed. And then, the mother with a call for testimony. And then, Sister Opal come up and say, Saints, last night, me and God pray. May I tell him, say, him no love me. And may I go give up. And all of this and a bag of chips. I'm just thank him. So him can single me out. And just come and whisper something in my ears. I love you. Would I just take up myself and go home? Yeah. Take up myself and go home. Can I say to us? Once you're here, just move. If not, a horse of doubt insecurities, flaws, and all, will all of that will start to seep in. Everything. Which will then result in you being stagnant. Because now you know, you get the instruction and all of this come and cloud your mind. You can't move. You won't be able to move. 
And what will happen is that you will start to believe that you are incapable of doing a thing, dwelling on the flaws and the insecurities and the lies from the enemy. And that is where the flesh is fed. The truth is you may have you may not have all the capabilities to do a thing. And that's reality. But God wants to tell you that. Sister Rochelle, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Sister Trish, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen? The Christ, the Christ that lives in me, the Christ that lives in you, the Christ that lives in you is able to catapult you into execution. Paul said he was given a thorn in his flesh to keep him from becoming proud. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 7 to 9. Three times he asked the Lord to take it away from him, he said. Hallelujah. Each time the Lord replied. The three times, you know. Paul asked, you know. Three times the Lord replied. My grace is all you need. My power. This version says my power works best in weakness. Three times, you know, Jesus said, my grace, my grace is all you need, Sister Trish. My power works best in your incapabilities, in your flaws, in your doubts. My power, the Lord Jesus Christ's power works best in weakness. I don't know who needs to hear this, but when you feel incapable, when you feel you don't have the necessary skill set to do a thing, I say to you that you are, you are the perfect candidate. Caps like that. You are the perfect candidate for the Lord to show forth his power. The perfect candidate for the Lord to show forth his power. Just move with Christ. Once you're here, just move. Amen? Uh, the scripture says in part B of verse 37, going into verse 38, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt be behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. Oh my God. My God. She took something so expensive to worship God. Hmm. Something that some would argue that she was wasting the perfume because it could be sold and the money be put to good use but she took something so expensive to worship God <laughs> my question to us is would you take something so precious to you something that is of great value something, something that is of great worth your achievements, your business to give God glory? How devoted are you to serving God? We say, no more me, though. No. So much time of all in the presence of God. No more me. But if the Lord instructs you to give up that job because the purpose I have for you doesn't entail you having a job right now, will you do it? Are, are we ready? Are we really ready and willing to offer that precious thing for the glory of God? Are you willing, if you are married, to say, Lord, my marriage is yours. Use us for your glory, not to satisfy what we need. Lord, we want a care, but 
if that doesn't align with your will at this present moment, use us for your glory in this season. Are you willing to say, God, this marriage belongs to you? Do what you may. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I am willing to set aside the earthly desire to experience your kingdom here on earth. Are you willing? Hallelujah. Are you willing? Do we really understand the vow? No more me. School fee pay. First semester, first year, college. You we. And God said, where you are, go. Are you willing to say, all right, God, no more me. I am not going. Or you will you, you may allow the devil to see you in thoughts, to discourage you. And then they say, oh no, I don't got that. I never yet hear God's voice. I don't hear that. Do we really understand the vow? No more me. If God said, Marshall, don't sell no egg for two weeks. I'm going to send those person who you're supposed, supposed to supply. Don't sell it to us. So that means that when I send them, you must not take the money. Marshall, will you do it? Huh? If God says that he wants you to host two visitors at your house for a few months, Will you do it? If he says you must put somebody's schooling expense in your budget for a couple semester, would you do it? We declare it, you know, no more me. But do you really understand it? No more me. This woman took the expensive perfume and anointed Jesus' feet with it. My question to us. Would you? Would you? And I'm coming down now. Verse 39. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She is a sinner. And I say to us saints, that you'll always have people watching that will discriminate, scoff at you, and even scorn you in their mind. Yeah, man. Them are always. But I say, if, if God could reveal what some people are saying about us in their minds, oh my word. Mm. If God, if we hear somebody, some people saying that their mind towards us, my God. So as I said before, don't pay the onlookers any mind. Focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. But what actually stood out to me mostly in this verse, and it is also something I want to challenge us with, is the fact that back in those days, it was customary to wash a visitor's feet 
when they are being welcomed as a form of hospitality. This can be seen in Genesis 18, when Abraham saw the three men standing, and he went to them, bowing low to the ground, asking them to rest in the shade of this rest in the shade of this tree while water is brought to you to wash your feet. And Jesus actually said it in verse 44 of the same Luke 7. He said, Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet. But she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. So it was customary for them. So, how is it then these guys knew the right thing, knew the right way of doing things, yet they allowed a sinner woman, and as the NLT version labeled her, an immoral woman, to come and do what they should have already done. How is it that a woman from a different domain came into somebody else's domain to do what he should have already done? People of God. <laughs> so after we've been empowered at the retreat just a few weeks ago, no, have learned strategies to continue to build on Christ. And even if you weren't at the retreat, after the biblical truths and principles that we've been exposed to time and time again, will you allow someone who doesn't know Jesus, haven't accepted, been accepted him, to come and start doing the things that you should have been doing time and time again? Philippians 4 verse 9 says, Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. I encourage us to always put to practice everything that you have learned or exposed to because God can and he will send someone to show us up. And God, what are about, you know? The man they no play. Always be intentional in doing the right thing, saints of God. In and out of season. And as I close, I want to encourage someone who doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. This sinner woman could have let, could have allowed pride cause her to miss out on her salvation. Because if you read further down, Jesus forgave her of her sin and she was added to the kingdom. But she never let no one or anything hindered her encounter with Jesus. So I say, don't let the fear of what your peers would say, like this woman, block out the distraction and come to him. He's able to save. I want you to understand that God doesn't look at outward appearance as we human beings do, who then judge in our minds and discriminate like the Pharisees. Because sometimes we go like say, we're not judging you know, I will not discriminate. But sometimes we are like the Pharisees. But God doesn't look at the outward appearance. God searches the heart. When God, when God wanted to anoint one of Jesse's son, Samuel was looking at the outward appearance. 
the physical structure. But God, as I said before, was looking at the heart. Is your heart at the place to receive the Lord? It doesn't matter the state you are in or how deep you are in, in sin. It doesn't matter if you know, say, you are a sinful, immoral person. Once you come to him, he will save, he will forgive, and he will accept. So if you are in the house online, I will watch this later. Jesus is able to save you. Step out of the crowd like that immoral woman. And say, God, I'm me and you. I'm willing to be saved. And these are my few words in Jesus' name.